Hi folks, Damon here. So today I want to talk to you about pod templates on EMR on EKS. We released this with EMR 5.3 and 6.3 back in May, and it's a way that you can kind of customize how Spark drivers or executors run on your EKS cluster. And I'm going to dive into two main use cases. One is uh, changing where or how your jobs run for both the drivers and the executors. And the other use case is using something called a sidecar container to run code alongside your job. So let's dive in. I've got the documentation up here. I just want to call this out because uh, it's got a lot of info that is going to be really useful for you as you're building out your pod template. We list some common scenarios, we give an example here, and there's also certain fields that you can or cannot use, and so we kind of document those here as well. And then finally, um, there's also a set of different volume names that get mounted by default on these EMR on EKS pods. So for example, there's this container communicate pod. There's actually a heartbeat file on there that does determines when the Spark job has started and when it stopped. There's also this application log dir volume that gets mounted that contains all the Spark logs. So you can inspect those Spark logs uh, during the runtime of the job if you wanted to. So um, let's, let's dive into some actual code to see how this works. So the first thing I want to show uh, let's scroll back up here to my example, is how to uh, limit your executors to running on spot instances. This is a very common scenario for folks where their executors can tolerate instance loss and they want to be able to run it on spot in order to save cost. So before you get started there, one prerequisite is that on your EKS cluster, you've got a node group configured with uh, spot instances. So I've got two node groups here in my EKS cluster. The first one you can see I'm just using M5XL and there's my on-demand capacity type. So I'm going to use this to run my drivers because I want that node uh, to be reliable. I don't want that to, uh, to you know, disappear out from under the job. And then I've also got my spot node group here. And so I'm using a bunch of different instance types. They're all 2XLs and they're all in the C class. And that um, ensures that we get the same amount of resources uh, pretty much essentially, depending, uh, or I should say regardless of what kind of instance type gets populated from spot. And then you can see down there, I've got the spot capacity type. So that's my spot node group. I'm going to target my executors to run on there. So let's go back to my code. How do we actually enable this? We need to create two pod template files. So first, um, we've got our spot pod template.yaml file. And in there, we just have a node selector spec that says run on the spot capacity type. Pretty straightforward. On the on-demand pod template, we just say use the on-demand capacity type. Then we just take those two YAML files and upload those into S3. And then we run our Spark job with that pod template specified for the executor and driver. So let me go ahead and I'll start this job and talk about it. So I'm just using the EMR containers start job run command. And um, the only thing different that I'm doing other than a normal start job run is I'm using this um, Spark Kubernetes driver pod template file and Spark Kubernetes executor pod template file. So for the driver one, I point to the on-demand pod template. And then for the Spark Kubernetes executor one, I point to the spot pod template. And if I do an AMS or AWS EMR containers, describe job run and I point to that uh, job ID, we'll see that that job is submitted and you can see the configuration of it there. There's a couple ways to kind of verify that this is doing what we expect it to. One is we can use uh, cube control. So if you have access to the, the Kubernetes control plane, you can do this cube control describe node and filter by spark drivers in your uh, EMR jobs namespace. So if I do this and uh, execute that, what I should see is I should see one uh, node come back with the on demand capacity type, and that'll be my driver. So you can see there, there's my driver. It came back with the on demand capacity type. And if I want to look at the executors, I can run that same command and I just filter down to the spark role of executor. And what I should see is I should see a set of nodes come back that are all running on those spot instances. And there's a one, two, three. Those are all my executors running on spot. So awesome. We've configured our job to run the executors on spot and the drivers on on demand. If I want to do this another way, um, the Kubernetes dashboard is also really useful for being able to see this. So you can see here's all my pods in my EMR jobs namespace. If I scroll down, you should see my driver pod down here. And if I click on the driver pod, I can click on the node here. And up on the labels, you'll see that the capacity type is on demand and it's running on that M5XL. If I go back to one of my executors, let's say this one right here, 
Let's go down to that node and scroll up and you can see there's my spot capacity type and the spot instance we got was a C5N2XL. So that's how my executors and my drivers are kind of configured using pod templates in my EKS cluster. Pretty awesome in order to do that. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of stop that job now because that takes a while to run and I uh, don't want that to, uh, to keep going. So let me do a cancel job run. Well, that's canceling. The other thing I'll mention is you can also limit executors to run on Fargate too. So this is great if you want a serverless option. You have to go ahead and create a Fargate role and create a Fargate profile. But in that profile, you'll use a set of selectors. So you'll say, uh, here's a Fargate profile for my EMR jobs namespace. And then I'm going to add this label to it as well. So any pod that starts up that has this label added to it, that'll run in that Fargate profile. Um, so you just be careful to add that on because if I just created a Fargate profile for that namespace, any job in that namespace or any pod in that namespace would then run on Fargate. So um, that's why I'm adding that label there. And then when you want to run that, all you need to do is add this um, Spark Kubernetes Executor label configuration to say, hey, here's the label for this pod, and that'll go and run on Fargate and spin up as many you know Fargate uh, executors as you want. So that's a cool way that you can also use this to run on serverless, and you can still specify your, your um, driver pod template file to run on on demand. So that's pretty awesome. Next, um, I'm going to show how to run a sidecar container. So sidecar containers are pretty useful, and most folks use them for metric gathering or forwarding logs. Um, I'm going to use a sidecar container to send out tweets about the status of my job. <laughs> um, so let's have some fun with that. I've got my Spark tweeter here, and that's uh, just a little code I put together. It's some Go code. Uh, if I look in monitors here, what it's going to do, it's actually going to monitor the Spark API and um, check it every five seconds. And depending on what's happening, it's going to send out a tweet updating me on the status of the job. Awesome. So um, what I've done is I've kind of bundled this up. And this is a pretty good example because I've got also some EMR specific stuff here that shows you know, how to monitor the heartbeat file, how to wait for it, um, all that kind of stuff. And so I've packaged this up into a container image that's hosted on the GitHub container registry. So back in my code, um, I had to create a Twitter app so I could tweet out. And I'm going to take my consumer key in secret and access token in secret and store that in a Kubernetes secret in the EMR jobs namespace. So I go ahead and say create secret and um, I provide all those uh, secrets there. And then I'll create my pod template file. So again, we have a spec section here and then we have a containers section. So I'm gonna add a new container, that's my sidecar tweeter. I'll just point it to the latest image of my Spark tweeter that's out there on the GitHub container registry. And then here's where I provide my environment variables. So you can see it's gonna pull these variables directly from that Twitter creds secret. And so uh, I'm not exposing any sensitive information in my uh, pod template file here either. And then finally, I mentioned these earlier on, um, I'm going to mount the application log directory because I want to be able to you know, kind of look at logs that are coming out of it. And then I'm also going to mount this container communicate volume so I can look at that heartbeat file and know when the job has started and finished. So I'm going to take this YAML file, upload that to S3, and then I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to do an EMR containers start job run. And just for my driver, I'm going to say driver pod template file um, tweetcar.yaml. So that means that when that uh, driver pod spins up, it's going to run that uh, additional container right next to the driver pod for the lifetime of that driver pod. So let's go back to our Kubernetes dashboard to see exactly what that looks like. So there's my Spark driver. It is already spinning up. If I go and click on that and scroll down a little bit, what we'll see in the containers section is we'll now see this new sidecar tweeter in here. Um, you can see there's my image that it's pulling down and all the other information about it. And then the other containers there, there's my Fluent D container um, that's built in with EMR that does log forwarding. And then I've also got my Spark driver container down here that's um, kicking off the Spark job. I can also look at the logs for that container and we can see um, here's my sidecar tweeter logs. It's waiting for the EMR Spark heartbeat. Uh, it's using the Spark Twitter account and then it looks like it already sent a tweet. So let's uh, double check that. So here is uh, my Spark Twitter. And if I refresh that page and scroll down a little bit, we can see that 33 seconds ago, hey, Decourt, a new Spark app is starting. Um, and it gives me the ID of the Spark app and it's pulling that directly from the Spark API. So um, pretty awesome. This code can run right alongside the driver container. You can also do this on the executor containers if you wanted to, um, but this one I just have on the driver container here. It's kind of a fun example, but you could imagine if you had maybe some Slack chat ops where you wanted to let people know that a job was 
was starting, or if a job failed, you wanted to send an, an alert or something like that, you could definitely use this functionality to kind of monitor that job and take custom actions based on the output. Um, and this job, I'm just kind of monitoring. You can see here, I actually just added a new uh, tweet to that thread that said one minute in, still going, and it you know completed 10,000 jobs and has 33 that are still active. So you can you know create a monitor, a real-time monitor uh, for this as well. So pretty awesome to be able to have this functionality. You can also do init containers where you run uh, a container before the job starts. And depending on the success or failure of that, you can continue to run the Spark job. So a lot of options here from the sidecar container perspective. Um, that's about it for right now. If I go back to the dashboard, you can see um, that's still you know there. And, and if I refresh that, you can see the logs coming out of that. So um, yeah, that's all I wanted to show for today. Go check it out. If you have any questions, feel free to ping me on Twitter. I'm at Decor and definitely subscribe for more videos like this one. Have a great day. Bye.